Good evening, brothers and sisters. I am happy to have you join us here tonight. I'd like to begin by letting you know that whatever it is you're going through right now, you are not alone, and we are here with you. These past months have affected us in many different ways. And with every uncertain change, we are lost. We are lost in our anxieties, in our fears, and in our doubts. And with that in mind, brothers and sisters, I'd like to remind you of a beautiful verse from Romans 8.31. And it says, What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, then who is against us? St. Paul reminds us, despite all these struggles, there is an undeniable truth that we are children of God. And we have been called and known even before we were conceived. And God loves us so much that He sent His only Son to save us from our sins, from our fears, from our doubts, from our anxieties. It is in Him we are free. And with this, brothers and sisters, I'd like to ask you to join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Father, speak a message of love for us today. You know our hearts, and you know what's going through it. In our weakness, O Lord, we ask you to fill us up and fill us with your Spirit. Remind us, O Lord, that no anxiety, no doubt, no depression, no fear can ever take away from your love and the fact that we are your children, O Father. You are a God who loves us. You are a God who will never forsake us. And you call us each by name. Let this be our prayer of hope, brothers and sisters. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. That the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me And oh his love for me Oh his love
remind us of the one thing that will stay constant. That we are your children, and you are our Father who loves us unconditionally. And in your love, we find hope. We find peace. We are chosen, not forsaken. Let this be our prayer of hope, O oh Father. Let this be our prayer of love. Hi, everybody. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Feast Makati Worship Team. Yes, I am a child of God. Yes, I am. So, kamusta naman po kayo? Welcome to the Feast Makati uh, live stream. Uh, we are blessed, actually, to have you uh, this evening. Kamusta kayo? Kamusta kayo? Kamusta kayo? Sana, I, I, sana okay po kayo. Uh, I pray that everything is well with you and your family. And I, I'm not sure how your day went or how your day is doing right now, but let's take a break, okay? Let's take a break from all the negativities of today and uh, let's worship the Lord, amen? Can we just worship the Lord for, for the next uh, hour and a half that we have and uh, focus on Jesus? And uh, again, thank you for those who are liking this episode. And for those who are sharing this episode, maraming 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 salamat po. Kasi you don't really know kung sino yung nabibless mo sa, sa circle mo, sa yung mga friends list, na baka para sa kanila ito. And uh, this whole feast, my prayer is that you engage your heart and your mind uh, during the whole feast service. It doesn't matter if you comment a lot or you uh, like a lot or you heart a lot. It doesn't matter for me. As long as you're engaged. But of course, you can always comment. You can always like. But sometimes you just have to be quiet and just, Lord, I need your word today. <laughs> Lord, I need your. I need to focus on you today. And uh, yeah, I, and I, I need your love today. And uh, there, thank you so much for those who are continuously supporting as well the feast. Maraming salamat po sa mga continuously nagbibigay. At hindi kundi dahil sa mga binibigay ninyo, eh, wala tayong feast online ngayon. At wala tayong mga natutulungan din. And it's blessing a lot of people uh, with our mission to spread God's word. Okay? So for tonight, uh, as, as our worship team declared it kanina, I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And my prayer is that you have that mindset as, you, as we jump into the feast. Ngayon, as we jump to the feast right now, that we are children of God, that no matter what's happening around us, we are His children. Because tonight, you'll be, you'll be blessed by your four feast builders of uh, Feast Makati. Uh, Brother Randy, of course, myself, Brother To, and Brother Eb. This talk was given last Sunday, uh, but of course, sabi namin, let's, let's play it to all other feasts this week. 
And uh, that's why maririnig niyo may good morning kami, may good evening, may good afternoon. Hindi namin alam kasi nga, <laughs> first time namin apat. But we tried our very best to, to give you a message about breaking point. Yeah. So, if you are this person right now who is in breaking point, ano yung ano tong breaking point na ito? Yung talagang, Lord, di ko na alam kung kaya ko pa. Lord, hindi ko na alam kung 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 ito Lord tapos na yung June <laughs> tapos na actually first six months of the year na imagine yun ba yun it's June today is June 30 tapos na ang first six months of 2020 kamusta ka na and that's why Lord kaya ko ba ba na the next six months ito will I finish this year strong kalahati pa lang Lord parang dami na nangyari parang pagod na pagod na ako and maybe you are in your breaking point but my prayer is this. Know that Jesus will do something in the next six months. Amen. He will do something. He is Lord. He is our Savior. He. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. And that's my declaration as I listen to this talk. I am a child of God. So come. And worship with us and listen to us be engaged in God's word. Amen. Let's all pray our favorite prayer at the feast. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, let's pray. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, speak to us this moment. Hold our hand. Speak directly into our hearts. I know that the best months are coming my way. Open doors of opportunity to serve so that I could bless others. I receive your love. I receive your blessing this moment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you enjoy this uh, feast service. I'll see you later. Okay? God bless. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. How are you, everybody? Hello. Kumusta Hello, kayo? Everybody. Kumusta? Hey, Oy, everyone. Parang hindi lang ako mag-isa ngayon na. <laughs> <laughs> Parang may kasama ako, mga kasama. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Brother Randy. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Brother morning. Randy. Good morning. Good morning, Brother John. Good morning po sa inyo na. Good morning, To. Good morning, Brother. To. <laughs> to. Yes. <laughs> morning. Ganun yata talaga pag uh, game <laughs> <Wala. na. laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, happy... <laughs> Happy day to all of you today. I nice. know that God is... Uh, yeah. Oy, andyan na. Hi, To. Hello, Hi, to. everyone. Happy, good, Happy good day. Morning, good day to you. Good night to everyone. <laughs> yeah, today will be a very special day because uh, today we are going to preach. Not you'll, you'll, You won't hear one. You won't hear two. You won't hear three, but you hear, you'll hear four preachers preaching God's word to you today. So I want you to lean in to God's word and be blessed because Amen. today we're going to talk about hope. Diba? Amen. Amen. Yes, hope. Hope. And, Spell uh, hope. <laughs> hope. Yan po yun. Joy na lang. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin because we know that uh, during this time, this is what everyone needs. Amen, Amen. guys. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, without further ado, we want to start and we want to we wanna get into 
God's word right away. So I'm Amen. gonna ask you to just type in the chat box, I'm ready. I'm ready because this is what we're gonna do just about right now. Amen. Amen. I'm ready. Amen. Ready. I'm 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 ready. All right. I'm ready. I want to start off, brothers and sisters, by just giving to you our verse for today. Then this is our main verse for today. And this comes from Romans chapter 4, verse 18. And I, I just want to explain to you everything. So let me just start by quoting God's word. And uh, um, we, we, will, uh, we will go straight into God's word. Okay? And uh, again, Romans 4, verse 18. I want you to extend your hands towards the word of God. And uh, we will just honor the word of God quickly together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Romans 4 verse 18. This is our main verse for today. And I pray that this will give you hope. It reads, he believed, meaning Abraham, hoping against hope that he would become the father of many nations according to what was said. Thus shall your descendants be. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that Abraham, when God, when he received God's promise that he will be the father of many nations, Abraham was advanced in age. And it was kind of impossible for them to have a child. And at that time, God promised him that he will be the father of many nations. His situation is not anywhere near the promise. Today, maybe. Your situation may not be anywhere near the promise that God made to you, but I want you to believe that there is hope. That Abraham believed, hoping against hope, hoping that this will happen. What is against hope? It's hoping against God's word. It's like drawing a check against a bank account. You know that you have money in the bank. When you write a check, you don't write a check when there's no money in the bank. And this is what where, where Abraham's coming from. He wrote a check of hope because he knows that there's hope in the bank. And um, just just to start it all, start us off. I want to go to another um, translation of scripture in the Message translation, and then we will hear our preachers. Okay, in the Message translation of the same verse, Romans four verse eighteen, it reads. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Type anyway. Anyway. He believed anyway. Come on, type it. Type it in the chat box. You need to be with us here because you need to see God's word. You need to hear God's word. You need to speak God's word. If you can't say it, say it. If you don't want to say it, just type it in. Type it in right now. Anyway, anyway, anyway. He believed anyway. Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. I, I want you to take note of that. Abraham decided to live not on the basis of what he couldn't do. There are a lot of things that we couldn't do right now in crisis. But we will not live according to that basis. But we will live on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to be, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Brothers and sisters, having hope is deciding to live, not on the basis of what we couldn't do, but on the basis of what God said he would do. So remember, we can hope against hope. And I want to bring to you your first preacher for the day, talking about hope. Please welcome Brother Jan Silan. All right. Thank you so much, Brother Randy. Grave. Uh, I want to thank you for, for having us this morning. Maraming maraming salamat to you. And I really pray that the Lord will bless uh, you more, Brother Randy. 
And uh, we'll bless, of course, Brother To and Brother Ed. It's, it's really an honor to serve with you all. And for those who don't know me, my name is Jan. Uh, and thank you so much again for having me. And I just want to honor <laughs> our worship team, sa lahat ng mga editors sa likod, sa lahat ng mga worship teams natin na nag-record sa mga bahay nila. Hangang-hanga po ako sa inyong lahat. So thank you. Thank you for giving your best uh, every week. Okay, so there. Uh, First point is about uh, hope. So the builders who've tried to at least define uh, what hope is, at least uh, from our uh, study. So H, O, P, and E. So we'll start, of course, with H. That's okay. The timing, the timing. I'm going to tell you. H is here. Sige nga. Pakitype po sa mga comments ninyo ngayon. Here. Yan, marunong ka bang makinig? Ang background ko po ngayon ay si ang uh, bagong-bagong uh, palabas sa Netflix ngayon, ang uh, Ghost Fighter, ang Yu Yu Hakusho. Grabe yan kasi bata pa lang po ako, pinapanood ko na yan, 90s po lumabas yan. At uh, sobrang, kasi dati di ba parang laban-laban lang, hindi mo masyado naiintindihan, basta uh, taguro lang, ang saya-saya. But I was I was you know, trying to uh, watch it again. Twenty minutes lang per episode. Ano pala siya si si Yusuke? Uh, in Filipino, it's sabi sa Tagalog Yuji ng pangalan niya. Grabe siya. Every decision that he will make is based on love. Grabe talaga. Si talaga oh, nga no. Grabe. He would rather uh, die than uh, than ano mayo maging comfortable siya sa buhay niya. He would give himself. Kaya pala siya yung napiling superhero. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank Netflix for for reliving my childhood. Yan, pati na rin yung slam dunk, pakisundod na rin, okay? So there, <laughs> I have a question. So my first point is about hearing. Is it hard to hear God today? That's my first point. That's my first uh, question. Is it is it hard to hear God today? I mean, Think about it. With everything that is happening uh, around us, with the pandemic, uh, people getting sick, people dying, people uh, losing lives, people losing jobs, people losing hope, and uh, I mean, but right? even without the pandemic, even before, na may mga konting problema kalang here and there, it was really hard listening to God. Parang ang hirap ng makinig na wala kang masyadong, walang pandemic. Eh, because of the noisy world that we live in, because of social media, because of uh, the things that we do all around, we move here and there, and it's really hard to listen to God. Eh, paano pa kaya ngayon? Na, alam mo yun, na may pandemic na, pero may kailangan ka pa rin bayaran. And, and, and ako lang po, may, I, have, I will give a series of talks to a company na blessed naman ako kasi nabibigyan ako opportunity to serve pa rin. Pero yung series of talks ko the next <laughs> few weeks and months, mga, ba, alam mo yun, yung mga kumpanya na they're about to retrench their employees. <laughs> Pero magtotalk muna to give them hope. Alam mo yun, parang, ha, ah, ito na ba yung trabaho ko ngayon? And I was, I was, we were talking to HR and uh, she was telling us that she was really having a hard time. Uh, she was almost about to cry during our, our call. But yeah, she feels what people are feeling. And wala talaga. So anong gagawin? May, may just pa pa. And, and the other day, I was, I was, I was driving because I'm, I deliver po ako ng longganisa sa mga malalapit lang naman sa amin. So I was driving in uh, Zubel Rojas. There, malapit lang naman po. Ma- ano po yan, di ba? Ma- ma- uh, masikip na kalye. Tapos nakita ko maraming maraming nakatambay ng mga jeep sa gilid. At maraming mga drivers. I, I-, I wasn't able to take a picture. But I saw this in Google, this picture. Uh, na parang ganito yung setup nila na maraming mga ay sige kung yan so maraming mga tao talaga nasa labas mga kuya na ibalik mo kami talagang uh, ang hirap talagang may placard ako nakita doon talagang barya po para sa pamilya namin but of course because you know we don't want this COVID to spread we have to have safety measures it needs to be placed but you also fear for them you also feel for them and I was really praying Lord please provide for them as well or maybe you are in live events. I mean, my wife is a wedding coordinator and the, it's a very stressful time for her. But I think she's handling it very well. Grabe, talagang cool na cool pa rin siya. 
her her clients, the couples are anxious. Bakit canceled yung wedding nila because of the pandemic, and our business in that side is almost done to zero. And she's pregnant, <laughs> and we're behind uh, to our you know our target goal for her pregnancy bills. And not only that, school is already asking for tuition fee for Mateo. <laughs> Binabaan na na lang tuition fee, pero malaki pa rin. And by the way, I can list many, many more problems. I can list, <laughs> mauubos ang seven minutes ko, even in boom feast. If I can just list every problem that you and I have, that you and I experience, money, finances, health, everything. And the question is this, are you this person that is about in breaking point? Yung bibigay na. That's why my invitation and this hope is H is for us to hear his voice. Because it's important whose voice we're hearing today. Because we can choose to hear the voice of fear. We can choose to hear the voice of social media, the voice of negative people, the voice of negative comments. But my invitation, dear brothers and sisters, is for us to hear God's voice. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of the Lord. So my invitation is this. Start your day by hearing his voice. Start your day with reading his, his, his scriptures. And end your day with prayer. End your day hearing his voice. Because a lot of times, if not all of the times, the best form of prayer is to be still and know that he is God. Ang dami pong online masses. Ang gagaling na mga pari natin. Just listen to them. Ang dami pong mga feast you can choose from. Listen to God's voice. There is no overdose of God's word and God's medicine works by taking his word into your being. You do not. Uh, you do that by listening to the word, reading the word, and speaking the word. So there. My seven minutes is up. alarm. <laughs> Hear his voice today. Let me give you the second point. Brother Eb. Magtuba. Thank you, Brother John, for that wonderful message about hearing God's voice, hearing God's word. And I believe before anything else, we need to hear Him. Welcome to our special talk at the Feast at Home. Our talk for today is all about hope. H-O-P-E, hope. And Brother John started with H for hear. And I will continue on that with with O, which stands for obey. Can you say obey? Obey. My main message for this part is God knows the best for you. Most of us don't like rules. We don't like being told what to do or when to do it or even how to do it. We like to be, to be independent and make our own decisions. Why? You see, we tend to believe that we know the, what is best, but you want to know a secret? Oftentimes, we have no idea what's the best decision is, and we end up making mistake after mistake after mistake. And I mean, making mistake is good because that's how we learn from life. But always making mistake is a totally different story. That's why God gave us truth. And that's why he convicts us to follow his word. Uh oh So today... Gusto ko i-share sa inyo four practical reasons why practice obedience to God's voice, to God's word. Okay? After hearing God's word, we need to obey. Are you ready? Can you type in the comment box, I'm ready. I'm ready. That's four practical reasons why you need to obey. Reason number one is this. It will benefit your family. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 says, 
Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put, puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I must confess, I follow God's teaching, yes. But the real challenge is following him every time. Thanks God, I have a beautiful wife and two lovely kids. One toddler, Via, three years old, and one preschooler, Eli, six years old. One morning, as I read my daily readings, God's message to me is very clear, to be patient. And I told myself, ay, madali lang to, easy lang to, to be patient. Not knowing what will happen for the whole day. Since I'm working from home now and I meet business clients online, I spend more time conducting meetings online already. And one time, I was leading a meeting online and about to, about to make the biggest power message, power statement that will make all attendees, all attendees say yes and close the deal. And without warning, my two kids suddenly barged in and made a lot of noise, grabbed my microphone, and worse, pull off the internet connection. And did I show patience? Nope. Far from it. Nung time na yon, I got angry. Nagalit ako. And thank God we have, I have a strong wife and who lovingly remind me to be more patient with my two kids. And I suddenly remember how God is so patient with me. So I, at that moment, I paused and I decided, okay, I, I, I need to extend my patience. I need to grow my patience. So to, to be kinder and, to, 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 and loving to my two kids. You see, my friend, obeying God will ultimately benefit your family. When you obey God, you will have joyful and more meaningful relationships. Amen? And reason number two is this. It will benefit the people that you lead. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 17 says, Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. At the early years of my ministry service, honestly, I really do not follow giving my tithe to God. Yung, yung 10%, na palaging sinasabi na 10%, 10%. So when I, appoint, when I was appointed to lead the min, uh, in a, a ministry in Mandaluyong area, I started to ask people to give. It was difficult. Ang hirap. Bakit? Kasi I do not practice what I'm asking them to do. My internal operating system is contradicting my outer actions because I sound right, but I feel not so right. Remember this. People will hear your words, but they will feel your real attitude. So they do not give fully, and the blessings that comes from giving, both practical and spiritual, are blocked in their lives. Praise God, along the way, the Lord uses mentors and again, my wife, praise God, the wives, to remind me to do what is right. Today, I shamelessly, talagang shameless akong manghingi sa mga taong na magbigay. Bakit? Because it's for them and the people they love. It's for them to develop more trust to God and support the ministry where they get their spiritual nourishment as well. Yan. So reason number three is this it will benefit the leaders above you and the people they lead. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. I learned at young age to be independent. Brothers and sisters, my parents work hard for the family. My father is a professional musician who works at night and sleeps at day. He also works abroad. So madalas wala siya sa bahay. And my mother, who is a teacher, works hard as well. So wala din siya sa bahay most of the time. And most of the time, I was left at home to take care of my two little kids, two, li two, li two little brothers, and, to run, and also to run the household. That's good because I learned how to be responsible and independent. But meron din siyang negative effects sa akin. Uh -oh. I find it hard to follow people with authority above me. In my mind, why should I obey? I can survive and grow on my own. There's no need. But God used, praise God, God used spiritual mentors in, my, in the ministry who shared and demonstrated to me why he himself obey authorities above him. And I realize that obeying the leaders above me will surely benefit the other, other people that that leaders lead. 
and ultimately benefits me in the long run. Which leads me to the fourth reason why we need to obey God's voice and God's word. Reason number four is this. It will ultimately benefit you. Yes, it will benefit you. The Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 22, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Grabe, di ba? Do what it says. I like reading the Bible daily. I use Didake and Companion. It gives me healthy level of peace and love from, from the Lord. But admittedly, not all the time, I act on what I have read. And through the years of reading the Bible, I realize, I realize that if I do not take action on what I read, it's a total waste of time and energy. Bakit? You see, I'm, I'm getting nothing out of it. And secondly, ito pang mas dangerous, I increase as I increase my knowledge in reading the Bible and not doing anything by reading it daily I I am not acting on it slowly it will develop in me a certain level of spiritual pride that I'm better than other people which is not true totally not true today as much as I can far, far from far malayo pa sa perfect but when I read the Bible I get something to write on and after reading, I make a pause for a moment and, and write my one simple action from the reading. And friend, remember this. Execution is everything. Palitin ko na if you miss it. Execution is everything. It's what you do. What, it's what you do on what you know that really matters. So what is the answer to the fundamental question kanina na binigay ko sa iyo? Why obey God when you hear Him? God knows the best for you. God bless you. Listen to the next part of this, of this talk. Planting. Brother, by Brother Tori Lova. And everyone who is watching on this live stream, God bless you. Ang galing. Like, can we give a round of applause for Brother Jan and Brother Eb and who started it all, Brother Randy? Ganda, no? Hear is H. Obey is uh, O. And now I'm going to talk about planting. Can you say that in the comments? Plant. Plant nga tayo. So again, my name is Brother Torilov. I built the feast on Thursdays before, but now it's a weeknight feast. Um, Tina, it's a it's time ko rin yung time ko para hindi ako ma-overtime. Joke pa lang, ubus na oras. There, there was this guy um, in the park. He was just watching things happening in the park. He was just sitting on a bench. Tapos nakita niya, there were two guys doing something sa, sa grass a, a, a little ahead of him. He saw them that they were planting something. So napan, pinagmasdan niya. First of all, this guy, there, the first guy, started digging up the earth. Tapos lalagyan niya. Tapos magpapos siya. Tapos the second guy would put the earth he, that was dug up back into the hole. So, nagtaka yung nag-observe, ba't kaya ginagawa yun? Anong, anong kinag- ginagawa nila? Then, they walked a few meters uh, away. First guy did the same thing. He dug up the earth. He paused. Then, the second guy would put the earth back without doing anything else, but just putting what was dug up, dug up back. They did it for 10 times. And nagtaka yung guy, ba't anong ginagawa nila? Wala silang ginagawa dun sa earth na binutas nila. So he couldn't contain his curiosity. He approached them and he said, he asked them, Anong kinagawa niyo? Parang, parang may off. You dig up the earth, then you put it back. Sabi ng first guy, Ah, kasi ano kami, inutos kami, inutos kami ni Mayor na mag-tree replanting dito. So nagpa-plant kaming seeds. Tapos sabi niya, Wala naman ako nakikitang plinant yung seeds. Ah, kasi ganito yun. Kasi tatlo kami dito. Ako yung tiga-dig up. May tiga-plant. Pero absent siya. <laughs> Tapos yung kaibigan ko, pangatlo, siya yung tiga, tabang ng earth. Can you tell the person beside you, if you're beside someone, sabi mo sa kanya, huwag ka nga absent. Magplant ka. So we're talking about planting. After hearing, after obeying, and Brother Eb uh, talked about execution. So that's what we need to do. We need to start planting. Not necessarily getting a plant. Marami sa atin ngayon nagsisumula magkaroon ng plant sa bahay. Kami, may mga plantita at may mga plants na kinuha si Mrs. Marami ng hashtag plantitas dyan o plantitos. But 
planting, simply doing something. Can you type in the comments, do something. May this be the season that you start doing something about your life, about your, your business, about your work, about your hobby, about your book, about your purpose. Because if you're wonder, wondering how can I have hope in this season, simply helplessness kasi is the breeding ground of hopelessness. If you're helpless, if you don't do anything, if you just succumb to the idleness and the, and the problems that you see on social media, hopelessness will abound. So do something. Sabi nyo nga ulit. Type it in the comments. Do something. Stop waiting. Stop being idle. Do something. Tanong sa inyo mga kapatid, what are you doing in this crisis? What are you doing in this crisis? Anong ginagawa nyo? Ngayon na may crisis, una lockdown tayo, wala tayo, hindi tayo makalabas. Ngayon nakakalabas tayo pa unti-unti. But in the season that we're in, what are you doing? Are you wasting time? Are you worrying? Are you spending your time complaining? Are you TikToking? Are you Netflixing and that's all you do? Are you face apping? Itong pinakamatindi. Are you online shopping? Yes, get me. Or are you planting? Tell the person beside you, be busy. Be busy. Be busy with things that build you. That's what we should do. Let's focus on that. To build hope in your life, to bring back hope into your system, be busy with things that build you. So that this season will become a season of growth and not a season of grumbling in your life. We plant when the world tells us to pause. We work when the world tells us to wait. We toil when the world tells us time out. Because what can spiral us down is idleness. Pag wala kang ginagawa, pag naghihintay ka lang na bumalik tayo sa mundo. We, the, we become a victim of, of the situation. And we become a victim of overthinking, of giving in to the fears circulating, leading us to, display, to despair. We end up blaming others instead of doing something about it. The opposite of despair, I believe, i sorry, the opposite of fear, I believe is despair. And when we despair, it is because we feel that there are no, no choices. So do something. Planting is doing something and that gives us choices because we become active. To do something in this season where it's so easy to be panicky and paralyzed. I'm going to give you two reasons why planting gives us hope. Are you ready for it? Type in the comments, I'm ready if you are. These are two reasons why planting gives us fresh hope. Reason number one, the planting revitalizes you. Can you type that in the comments? The planting revitalizes you. Um, I, I want to recall, itong season, I so much give, um, compare this season that we're in as the season nung umalis yung La Moses with the Israelites from Egypt and they walk for 40 years through the desert towards the promised land. Parang pareho lang eh. Na parang pareho lang yung desert experience nila sa crisis situation natin with this COVID-19 thing. They were wandering and waiting for their promised land to come or for them to reach the promised land. They were strolling and suffering. Pareho lang, ano? parang pareho lang. Not, not, not knowing when mag end ang problema at ang crisis nila. They were thinking that there's no end to this crisis. Well, this season is like a wilderness experience. Amen? The best place out of it is simply to walk through it. If you're in a desert situation, mga kapatid, don't wait. Don't just stay still. Walk to, to the promised land. Walk towards your destination. One sure way to be hopeful, to know that you're not staying in the situation, is to walk. Walking towards something. Say towards. Letting hope be your strength to take that extra, that next step to get towards your destination. Without hope, we wander aimlessly. With hope, we walk toward a destination. And planting gives you an activity and a goal because it gives you a harvest. Rule of the, of the universe, mga kapatid. When you plant, you eventually harvest what you plant. So when you have a goal, you look forward to a harvest that is coming. 
And that revitalizes you and helps you overcome this season. No planting, no harvest. So plant. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, kulit kulitin mo siya, sabi mo, plant. I remember I'm working out now. I used to work out prior to this. I mean, I've been a little over the heavy side. Um, but lately, nag-work out na ako before this crisis. Nung tinamaan ako ng, tinamaan tayo ng crisis namin, I couldn't go to the gym anymore. And so I would do online work. I would go to YouTube to do what I see there. Pero para napansin ko, para hindi ako pumapayat na. One thing is because siguro nawawala na ako na walking. Hindi na nakakalakad. Before, I would walk to, to work every day. I would, I would walk around. So I'd work three times a week pa rin. Pero parang hindi nyo lang halata dito kasi hanggang dito lang. Pero uh, nandun pa rin eh. So nandun yung temptation not to do anything. Saka na lang ako mag-workout. Pagbalik ko na lang sa mundo pag may gym na ulit. But I realized I have to plant. I have to plant because I need a harvest to come in later on. Kahit wala nakikitang results. I would work out three times a day, but I intensified my workout. I got a trainer. My trainer before would do Zoom t- teachings na tinuturo niya ako via Zoom. And it, I, I tried to fight the temptation to say na wala naman nangyari. Workout on a workout, pero hindi pa rin, wala pa rin results. But that's the rule of planting. Plant kahit wala pang results na nakita. Because the harvest is coming. And later on, when you get out of there, Months from now, you will say, Buti pala nagtanim ako. Kasi ngayon, I starting, I'm starting to enjoy the results. My future, will, my future version will thank me for doing that. And don't just plant some. I want to leave you with this powerful message. I screenshot nyo, I type nyo, ito gawin nyo. Plant plenty. Harvest hugely. Plant plenty. Harvest hugely. If you want to earn in sales, plant ng plant. Kami ngayon, yung kumpanya namin, we're surviving because sa tinanim namin years ago, ngayon lang na bumibili. Pero kung wala kang tinanim, wala kang aanihin. So, plant plenty. Plant now. And when you're, and you become excited, especially when you're busy doing something you love, when you're actively pursuing something you, you're passionate about, hope flows in. I so believe that. When you're actively pursuing what something you're passionate about, nagkakaroon ka ng hope. Pag naghanap ka ng hobby na gustong-gusto mo, even in this season, and you're passionate about it, nagkakaroon ka ng hope, oy, it's not that bad. There's something new I realized today. Gary V, some of you know this, the Gary V of the US, Gary Vi- Vaynerchuk, he said this, Do it for the process, not for the prizes, and your life will be so much better. So do it, kahit wala kayo nakikitang results, just keep planting, because planting revi- revitalizes you. Amen? Amen. The second reason why planting gives us fresh hope is simply planting roots you. Sabi nyo nga, roots. Roots. Ruh. Planting roots you. After planting revitalizes you, planting roots you. This is a twist. Akala mo when you heard the word planting, ah, sige brother, to talk is all about magtanim ako, mag-business ako, mag-grow ako ng something. But it's a twist ko. Don't just plant something in a field to grow, but be the field God will plant to grow something. Wow. Ulitin natin yun. Don't just plant something in a field to grow, but ikaw, you be the field that God will plant to grow something. It's not just you planting something. It's God planting something in you in this season. God growing something. I want to tell you this, and I want you to just be left by, with this. The most important thing you should grow in this season is your relationship with God. Amen? Among all the things you can plant, among all the things you can build, among all the things you can restore, your relationship, nyo, you as a son to your father, you as a daughter to your father. May that grow in this season. Question. Marami ba sa inyo, konting problema lang, parang lahat ng pinakinggan ko sa feast, hindi ko, wala nag make sense. Konting ar- agitation lang, ang laks ko magalit. Eh, kala ko, ang dami kong makapost ng mga na pinapakinggan ko kina Brother John, Brother E, Brother Randy, Brother To. Parang nawawala agad. Lahat ng mga pinag-aralan ko, lahat ng mga basehan ko. Nawawala ang pagka-feaster ko, paglabas. Is that guilty? 
because God needs to plant something deeper in you and that's what's what God is God wants you to experience this season um, I want to show you a photo this is a this is what it looks like to plant there's a parable of the sower Jesus talks about the parable of a sower and we know this story from from Sunday mass we know this now a sower plants seeds and some fell on um, the path the birds ate it up some fell on rocky ground the masyadong marami soil na tuyo some fell on the thorns that choke out. But there was some that fell on good soil and that became abundant. The meaning that we get from our, uh, our beloved priest, they tell us that planting seeds is like hearing and obeying and trying to obey, but hindi lumalalim ang mga tinanim mo. Boom. We hear and we start obeying, but dahil hindi malalim yung pinagtamnan ng salita ng Diyos, the worries of the situations remove it it gets stolen by the evil one it gets choked out but here's the clincher the end of it jesus says but those who plant well and those who grow deep it says in matthew 13 23 let's read that and the seeds sown in the good soil stand for those who hear the message and understand it they bear fruit some as much as 100 others 60 and others 30. So, mababaw lang if you get inspiration and like comments and posts by, by the feast and you like memes, etc. Like soil lang yun na, na mababaw. But you have to be rooted and allow God's word to be planted in you. God's message to be planted in you. So tell the person beside you, be rooted. Be planted. Some, may God plant something in you. Question, how is your relationship with God? Ask yourself, how is the soil which accepts the seed? Is it a fertile soil or a fearful soil? If it's not as deep, it's not as rooted, it's not as solid, then may this season be the season where you plant your relationship with God. This is the season to grow roots. Amen? So that your life bears fruit after this crisis. So that this crisis is a personal retreat to you, you grow. Allow God, God to plant in your life. Grow your relationships in the season. Give to those in need. Sana lumago yung pananampalataya mo. Be more grateful this season so that this season grows you. Just to end, after trusting in God, it's time to toil. It's time to do something. It's time to work. Amen? Let's see that. Um, after trusting God, um, he gives you the ability to make your miracle happen because that process helps you grow. I want us to all walk towards the promised land. Amen? Don't just wait. Walk. I want you to walk, to work, to plant. Instead of waiting, start working. Instead of being idle, start being innovative. Instead of panicking, start planting. Because if you plant well, this won't be a barren land. This will be a birthplace and a launch pad of your dreams. Amen. Can we give a round of applause? Hallelujah. So grow in God and everything else grows through you. Amen. Psalm 1 to end, verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is the law of the Lord and who meditates on His law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Brothers and sisters, plant in this season and you will prosper. God bless. But before we end, May e pa tayo kasi kung nag-end sa, sa P, hop lang to. To give you E, let's welcome our district builder and our favorite district builder, Brother Randy Borromeo. Thank you very much, To. That was awesome. Thank you, Jan, Eb, and To. Jan, J, Eb, E, To. Thank you, Jet. <laughs> um... I just want to say that um, we it is our it is our joy to be able to bring hope to you, but hope will not be complete without the E. 
And my, my message for you today, and the last letter in the word of hope is the letter E. And I just want to say that E stands for endure. Endure. Never underestimate your power to endure. Never underestimate your capability to endure. I just want to go back to the verse that I read earlier. And this is the message translation of our verse for today, Romans 4, verse 18. I'll read it again. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he could do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to be, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. God is telling you today that you're going to overcome. God is telling you today that you are going to prosper, that you are going to be healthy, that you are going to have fantastic relationships, that you're going to have a breakthrough. Maybe your situation right now is not consistent with your proclamation. But what do you do when your situation goes against your proclamation and your declaration? Trust in God. Hope in God. Believe anyway because it's only God who promised us and who continues to promise us and he continues to be true to every single one of the promise. Okay? Never underestimate your capability to endure. I'm going to share with you three R's so that you can endure. The three R's to endure, okay? Number one, we need to remember the purpose. Remember the purpose. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you where you are today? Why do you wake up in the morning? We need to be clear about our purpose in life so that we go back to that purpose. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, a, th a 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle. And when we do not know where to put the pieces of the puzzle and, or how to put them together, we go back to the box because on the box is the image of the whole picture. So you need to remember your purpose, okay? In Romans chapter five, in the in the in this in this particular translation the ESV translation it reads more than that we rejoice in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance there you go endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and god is giving us the ability to endure but for us to have the ability to endure, we have to go through suffering. We have to go through suffering because it develops endurance. And endurance produces character. And ultimately, character produces hope. So this is not something like uh, we have a choice. Okay? We have to go through this. And the earlier we settle with the idea, idea that God will allow us to go through suffering, that God will allow us to go through trials and hardships, not to destroy us, but to make us stronger. The more we get comfortable with that idea, the earlier we're going to have hope in our hearts. So remember your purpose. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you wake up in the morning? What is it that wakes you up in the morning? Ano ang gumigising sa'yo? Sa umaga. All right? Did, did, did you notice my, 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 my accent? Ano ang gumigising sa iyo sa umaga? <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? Remember your purpose. Number two, remember the past. Remember the past. I know you've heard me say this, and I'll say it again and again and again, because we need to be reminded that life is lived forward but appreciated backwards. Remember the past. What did God do for you in the past? What experience did you go through in the past? Did you go through trials? Did you go through challenges? And did you overcome? How did God work in your life so that you finally overcame what you were going through? Remember the past. You have experienced God's goodness. 
taste and see how good our God can be. You have tasted and seen God's power. You have tasted and seen that there's no one who put their hope in the Lord and was turned away. Do not doubt in the dark what you have seen in the light. I'll say that again. Do not doubt in the dark what you have seen in the light. Remember what you have seen. Remember what you have experienced. Remember the past and appreciate it because for you to have hope, you have to draw it against something. And Abraham hoped against hope. There's an inner hope that God has placed in us. There's an inner hope that God has placed in your heart. And you already have that hope. And we call that the blessed hope. The hope that one day we will get to see Jesus face to face. That one day we will face him. One day we will be with him. And whether you're experiencing hardships, trials, victories, or whatever, that hope is in you. It is Christ in you. Your hope of glory. And finally, the last R is remember the promise. Remember the promise. There is no one in the world. There's no God. I mean, we believe in only one God. But the world believes in so many gods. But there's only one God who's been true to every single promise that he made. Every single promise that he made. And he continues to be true. And he continues to promise us. And every time we go through trials, we want to endure. We need to remember the promise. We need to remember the promise. And what is promised? That God will see you through. That he has made you more than conquerors. That you can do all things through Christ who, th who strengthens you. That you will not be tempted beyond your capacity to endure. And with that temptation, God will give you a way out of it. God will allow you to be tested so you will have your testimony. God will allow you to go through a mess so you will have your message. God will let you experience problems so you will find out your purpose. And God will allow you all these so you will be reminded of his promise. I want to read to you Hebrews chapter 10, verse 16. And I want you to read, to listen and read with me, and I want you to just think on this for the whole week. Think on this for the whole week, and I want you to be blessed by God's Word. God's Word is alive and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrew says. And I want to read to you. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. When you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. You cannot receive a promise if you do not know what the promise is. So you discover what the promise is in your life. You ask God what he is promising in your life. Do God's will. And what is God's will? Trust in him with all of our hearts. And lean not on our own understanding. What is, what is the will of God? That we should believe in him and receive him as personal Lord and Savior. And you and your household will be saved. What is the promise? That if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Whatever situation you're in right now, whether however big your problems may be, I want you to know that there is a promise to look forward to, that there is a God who made this promise. Your ability to endure is not dependent on what you could not do. Your ability to endure is dependent on what God said he would do. The miracle is not in what you have lost. The miracle is, what you ha is in what you have in your hands brothers and sisters hope against hope hear god's word 
obey him. Plant so that you will have something to look forward to. No farmer plants and thinks that the plant will not grow. The reason you plant is because you want to anticipate that there will be fruit, that there will be growth. And finally, endure. Because God has given you everything to endure the trial, to endure this pandemic, to endure the challenges. And tomorrow, we will wake up victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord together. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do in your head. tomb of every Lazarus and your voice is calling me out and right now I know you're able and my God come through again you can do all things you can do a battle and I know I know you never will everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost a new wind is blowing right now breaking my heart of stone taking over like a cherry coat Are all crashing down 
Amen. I, I know that you will never fail, my Lord and my God. That's a, that's a beautiful message. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thank you so much for staying. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. It's really a blessing that you're part of this feast. And uh, we can't wait, actually, for you to be here. We, we can't wait, actually, for you, for us to see each other once again. Because, uh, wala, mas masaya pa rin kung mas, ano ba yun, Mag, magkasama tayo na, ah, thank you, Lord. You will never lose any battle. And uh, so whatever you're going through right now, dear brothers and sisters, hear his word every day, obey and plant and endure. And uh, kaya natin po yan kasi kasama natin ang Diyos. Amen? All right. And uh, I go now to my favorite part of the feast. And uh, that is the love offering. Yay! <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for being with us. This is the bank details for those who are blessed. I mean, you don't really have... Mar marami kasi nagsasabi, Brother John, grabe hirap na hirap na kami. Ah, wala akong maibigay. I think kaya naman. Uh, kahit one peso is better than zero. That's always. One peso is better than zero. And whatever you give, kunyari, you give one peso, 10% uh, of one peso goes to the ministries of Brother Bo. And uh, thank you so much for, for all the help. And, uh, and uh, there, I pray that as you give, I pray that the Lord will bless you even more uh, because of your giving, because of your faithfulness. So maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nagsosuporta at na nagbibigay all throughout this month. And we can never do what we're doing without you. Uh, we can never even produce uh, worship videos or edit or this. Ito, itong online stream na ginagawa natin if not because of your gift. So maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nagbibigay. That's the bank account over there. You can see it on the screen right now. And that's a that's a BDO account. But of course, if you uh, prefer to give in other banks, if you have Gcash, and uh, you prefer other banks, and uh, we'll we'll give you uh, account numbers. Just be sure that you message Fees Makati, the Fees Makati pages wherever you're watching this stream, and uh, we'll reply to you. We'll give you details and uh, thank you. Maraming salamat po uh, sa inyong pagbibigay, sa inyong generosity, and. Uh, Rest assured what you give uh, is blessing a lot of people. And uh, maraming salamat po. Next is the... Ah, yeah. Okay. So that's it. I pray that you connect us. Please do like uh, the Feast Makati District pages. Dito po sa Makati, sa Tagig, at saka sa Mandaluyong. At uh, ito pong stream na napakinggan nyo kanina, it will be streamed also on Thursday, uh, 7.30. Kung, kung uh, may mga friends pa kayong pwedeng invitahin din doon. Uh, online naman eh, libre naman at uh, konting internet uh, charges lang. But uh, thank you, thank you for, for inviting your friends. And we, we also have a weekend feast, yan naman. You'll, you'll hear more uh, kay Brother Randy at kay Brother Eb they lead the weekend feast. Tapos kami dalawa naman ni Brother to sa weeknight feast. So there, maraming 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 salamat. Again, I want to thank all the teams that are working so hard uh, sa mga editing team, sa mga worship teams, grabe ang gagaling ninyo hangang hanga ako sa mga with the limited resources na meron kayo. So ginagawa niyo ng paraan. So maraming maraming salamat sa lahat ng uh, nag engage po sa comments ngayon. Uh, maraming salamat po sa inyo sa pagsuserve. Salamat po sa lahat ng mga nag-share ng stream na ito. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga nagla-like, sa mga sumusuporta, sa mga nagmamahal. And my prayer is that you continue to grow more in love each day and uh, you continue to hear God's voice. Amen? So there. I hope I did not forget any announcements. <laughs> so there. Uh, let's pray. Let's pray again. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I pray for my friends uh, who are listening right now. In Jesus' name, I pray for protection. I pray for those infected by the virus. I pray that you heal them. I pray for those who are dead, who went to heaven. I pray that you guide their souls to your loving arms. And pray for those who they left behind. And 
pray, I pray also for our frontliners and for those going back to work and for everyone who's listening right now. Protect us. Love us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. See you Thursday for the stream again and see you next week. God bless you. I've searched in different places, a life beyond I see. Oh, wake out for greatness, a path that's fit for me. There's a hope in the horizon, a life beyond the sea. There's a God who knows no limits, and He'll part the sea for me. I'll take off from this edge, from this fear. I'll step out into the deep, to the unknown. For
Thank you.